Okay, so I don't plan on making cold opens a regular thing on this series, but I do feel like I have to say this much. See, uh, a couple days after I posted the review for Under the Shroud, I actually got a got a bit of a, uh, what do they call that? Not a PM, because, well, I mean, it's basically a PM, but that's not what Twitter calls it. But, you know, I basically got a note, got a little thing in my inbox, and it was from the Under the Shroud podcast, like the official thing, not uh, Ian Humphrey's account, which I tagged in my tweet, letting people know that the review was up, but the actual Under the Shroud account, and it was like, dude, thank you so much for this review, you know, that was... That was totally awesome, you know. It gives me motivation to keep promoting and et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like that never ceases to blow my mind when things like this happen on Twitter. You know, like all the, you know, I joke about the not to use modern terminology. I joke about the toxicity of Twitter. You know, God forbid you ever make a fat joke or a joke, <laughs> you know. God for. Um, yeah, I said that already. <laughs> yeah, this is the point where I kind of lose my thoughts and lose my organization, but that was just so cool, you know? It's like, I just know for a fact I'm going to generate the exact opposite reaction with this week's review. This week, I dive into my request pile covering audio dramas that were recommended to me through Twitter, either because people thought I'd like them or because the people requesting them made the audio drama, so promotion on that part, cool, I filled a niche. Also, people in real life recommended a few audio dramas, and turns out people I've known all my life, basically, are also into audio dramas. Who knew, right? <laughs> I am realizing just how deep this market is, and wow. And right out the gate, we will be reviewing The God Punks. Oh boy, kids. Grab a helmet, because this is gonna suck. The God Punks is not an audio drama. Therefore, it gets an instant zero out of four. But, but, it's not because of quality, it's not because of my personal grievances right out the gate. But, I give it a 0 out of 4 for the same reason I would give Bandersnatch a 0 out of 4 on my Netflix series, had I been doing the Netflix series at the time it came out, because Bandersnatch is good, okay? I'm not taking anything away from Bandersnatch, but it's not a movie. My Netflix series is about reviewing movies, and Bandersnatch is a choose-your-own-adventure video game, basically. So, it gets a 0 out of 4. Much like this is not an audio drama, it is an audio book, basically. Therefore, zero out of four on that part. But, in terms of quality, in terms of, you know, personal pet peeves or personal things that I like, as well as the fact that they followed me on Twitter and I feel like I kind of feel obligated to re review their thing, I might as well do it. The God Punks is narrated by a man who goes by the name of Pants Squirrel, and a woman who goes by the name The Cybernetic Pig. Okay then. The story of the God Punks basically follows a day in the life of a guy named Bob. He works in a factory where he eats dirt. He lives in a space-time booger. He, uh... God damn it, I can't do it. I, I... Are you guys ten? Seriously, this feels like it was written by a collective of 10-year-olds who kind of have an idea of how sex works, but not really. Let's understand, you get a boner, slap her titties around some, and then stick it inside her and pee. At the time I am currently reviewing this, there are only three episodes up on Stitcher. Maybe there's more on other platforms, but there's only three up on Stitcher, and... I checked out somewhere around episode two when I heard Bob lived in a space-time booker. If we're going to talk about the performances, I am going to have to change up my review criteria. So instead of reviewing this from an audio drama perspective, I'm going to have to review it from like an audiobook narrator perspective. And uh, honestly, the cybernetic pig is okay, but Pant Squirrel, I kind of get the feeling when he wants you to think something is funny, 
he kind of goes out of his way to kind of remind you this is the part where you're supposed to laugh, i.e. when he brings up space-time booger, he says, Bob lives in a space-time booger. You know, just forces it in your face, like, this is the joke, laugh, asshole. The engineering leaves a lot to be desired. I know in the past I said I can look past things like cheap microphones or the fact that people are recording their lines in different rooms, so one guy's recording has significantly more echo than the others, or you can kind of tell that one guy's using a Blue Yeti and the other guy's using like a $30 stick mic from Best Buy, but you know, when you hate a show, it's a lot more noticeable when the quality is not that good, and I'm just gonna come clean. I, I hated this. <laughs> This is a show that's clearly trying for, like, shocking, provocative, we're punk, and what it ultimately ended up coming off as to me was a couple of ten-year-olds trying to basically write the next tale of Scrody McBooger Balls. And if you don't get that reference, you, my friend, need to watch more South Park. Until then, one hat out of four. And that's gonna do it for this week's audio drama review. Be sure to tune in next week when I review something that's hopefully not so much of a dumpster fire. In the meantime, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell if you actually mean it. Until next time, people.